Thank you once again. Here I'm going to do another titration video, but this time around, the titration between a weak acid, a weak organic acid known as oxalic acid with IPAC name ethane dioic acid with a molecular formula of C2H2O4 is actually a dibasic acid then versus sodium hydroxide. So this titration is going to take place between a weak acid and a strong base. So Oxalic acid is a weak acid and sodium hydroxide is a strong base and in a titration between weak acid and strong base, the suitable indicator to be used is phenolphthalein. That's what we're going to be using in this analysis. So, I've made the solutions. This is my A, as you can see, it's well labeled there. This is my, the acid solution. This is the oxalic acid or the ethane dioic acid. And here is my sodium hydroxide solution. This is actually 0.1 mole per cube sodium hydroxide. Then this is approximately 0.05 mole per cube of this particular uh, of this particular oxalic acid. And uh, this is hydrated. So in this titration, since I've made the solutions, I'm keeping this away. Then don't forget to demand for this. I produce these chemicals myself, and I also supply. So if you also want to make yourself uh, available or you want to learn, you can watch some of my videos. They have taught very well how to synthesize lead nitrate from scratch. And lead nitrate is a common source we use in analysis. So, watch how to produce lead nitrate from the scratch, how I produced it, how I crystallized it. You can also join me in producing and marketing all this. But for now, patronize me. I need your patronage. To order, you call the number you see on the screen or you can chat me on WhatsApp. So, in this titration, actually, uh, I've told us that this is my A, this is my B, and this is actually oxalic acid is sodium hydroxide and my indicator is uh, phenolphthalein. That's the suitable indicator in this titration. So endeavor to watch my guide on titration for beginners, basic guide for beginners on titration. So here I'll go straight forward to the titration because I've made my standard solutions in this case. And this titration is targeted towards determining the water of crystallization present in this acid. Remember one of the uses of this uh, titration is to determine percentage water of crystallization and other uses include percentage purity to calculate molar masses of acid and bases to calculate relative atomic masses of metals. So there are many applications. But here, this is directed towards knowing the percentage of water crystallization in this acid because the oxalic acid is actually a dihydrate form of it, is what I actually used here. Then, and then to see the questions that follows after this titration. Here I will titrate for you to see the range of the endpoints required from this uh, titration. Then the question that follows, the likely questions. If you want the solutions, you can chat me up on the WhatsApp and then uh, you get the solutions to them. But here, these are likely questions and I predict questions that are likely to be used by examiners in examining you for your students. Okay, here, the material required, I've set up everything. I've filled this already with uh, A, that's the oxalic acid is here already. The initial reading, I think I'll get the camera closed, is 0.00. .00. Here, that's okay, it has gone down a bit, so I have to refill back. Okay, got the camera closed, you can see the initial burette reading as on the 0, 0.00 mark. So we go back and start a hydration. So I have my pipettes here, the volumetric pipette, which is here, and the graduated pipettes. This is 25 mil, that's 25 cm cube, and here is 20. I'll be using the two. So first, get to a my flask. Here is it. Then I have to add my indicator, this one of the name. Okay. We're looking at that neutralization, it will turn from pink to color. Great. 
Okay? I think I've got the corner of close for you to see the final of the red field. Okay? See, the final there is about 23 point. As for the rough type R, yeah, I think 23.5 or 0.6. Hi, my name is Cheryl. And I'm Jennifer. Guess, Guess what? what? There's a channel called Sound Majesty Easy World Science. And you know the best part? Mm -hmm. It makes science so easy. Wow. It makes science easy, simplified, and very, very fun. Guess what? Rocky Science ain't Rocky Science anymore. It's now ABC. Like if you didn't say anything. <laughs> Another thing about Sir Majesty Easy World Science channel is that he makes available laboratory equipment and reagents. Guess the best part if chemistry has been hard for you, he does tutorials. And another thing is when you order for these things, they are high quality and they are also cheap and affordable for anyone. If you want to order, just look at number below the screen. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the little notification button down below. Don't forget to share, of course, obviously, there's love in sharing. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll see you there. <laughs> Okay, let me run the titration again. For the second title, remember to wash it. Wash the conical flask or the LMI flask with distilled water. As usual, add indicator. Remember not to add too much to get a clear and uh, accurate end point. Although this is a bit weak, I want it to indicate well. So, initial is 0 0.00. So having done my first and I got it at uh, 23, so I keep moving until I get to at least. I'm sure it will pass everything. Okay. And I will trace it small, small. Here is 24 point, 24 point 4, nearly 24.5. That's 24.4. Yeah. Okay. Think. That's the value for this first title, and that's what. I'm using for this endpoint as far as my VB is 25. So let me use 20 cm cube as my VB here. Remember, after measuring your volume of phase accurately and you add water to the measured volume, it will have an effect on the endpoint. Why? Because water is already neutral, meaning I've measured 20 out from the stock solution. If I add more water here, the endpoint will not change. Why? Because water is already neutral. Water is neither seed nor base. 
and what is being neutralized by acid molecules, uh, the base molecules, and what is being neutralized by the base molecules are the acid molecules. Water is already neutral. Therefore, adding distilled water will have no effect on the end point. So, like these are measured out, adding more distilled water into it will not change the end point. Okay? Then, let me add my indicator. Remember my VB here is 20, so I want to know the amount of A that will neutralize it, the volume of A that will neutralize it. Yeah, so my initial is 0, 0.00, so I add in, it's obvious that more than 10, it's going gonna, gonna to consume more than 10 cm cube. And over here is actually 18.5, of course. So when I use 20 cm cube portions of B, 20 cm cube portion of B, it was neutralized by 18.5 of A. But when I used 25 cm cube portion of B, it was neutralized by 24.5. So that's the range of the endpoints between this titration taking place the 0 0.1 mole PM. Oxide and a solution of oxalic acid containing 6.3 grams of the hydrated, that's the dihydrogen of the oxalic acid, a DM cube of solution. So you can see approximately is about 0.05 mole and this is about 0.1 mole. Thank you for being there. Some of this World Science Channel is here for you. I am here for your academic success. Please endeavor to watch other videos here on this channel. This channel is only meant for exams. And don't forget to watch the basic guide for titration for beginners. You'll get the tips and some reasons and some steps necessary as a beginner and also as a teacher how to instruct your new students about titration. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, like, share and comment. God bless you for I cannot do without you. Bye for now. See you soon. Good luck in your exams.